thank you so much for joining me today. I am in Bologna, Italy. My husband and I have been traveling Europe for the last 10 months and it has been a wonderful experience. I wanna thank you guys so much for coming along this journey with us. I can't wait to keep making more food tours with you guys. Bologna, Italy is the food capital of this wonderful country and I am so excited to explore it because we're in the region of Emilia Romagna, which has some of the most fantastic food you're gonna find in the entire country. Lasagna, ragu alla bolognese, tortellini pasta, balsamic vinegar. This morning, I started my day with an espresso, or as you would say here, cafe, which is a wonderful single shot espresso that you can find in any cafe and it is the most decadent delicious little morsel of coffee you will ever have right now i'm in the neighborhood of ghetto hebraico a former jewish ghetto and if you haven't noticed on either side of me we have these wonderful porticos that are iconic to Bologna. When you come here, they are absolutely unmissable because they run for about 40 kilometers throughout the entire city. They are all different and unique in their own way because of the time period that they were built in. And really, it's a sight all on its own. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here in Bologna. And Sundays in Bologna are reserved for lasagna. And many restaurants won't even serve it unless it's Sunday. So I cannot wait to try that today. But first, I wanna show you guys something really cool and really special. So let's get started, let's go. Guys, I'm not sponsored by them, but Ride Movi has been our ideal way of getting around town easily in Bologna. They're scattered all throughout the city. It's only about one to two euros to get to most places in central Bologna. We rode our bikes from the center of Bologna out to the east side at Porta Saragossa. This is the starting point for one of the coolest portico walks in the city. Four and a half kilometers of uninterrupted portico all the way up a hill slow gradient to the Sanctuary di Madonna di San Luca and it's a church with a beautiful view of the city I can't wait to see it let's go all right yes Sunday is reserved for lasagna but we're about to take a four and a half kilometer walk uphill and I was already hungry to begin with so we actually stopped at this pastry shop called Neri it's on the way and it was packed with people I got a few pastries and a sandwich let's dig in all right this one is called banana it's not banana flavored, it's simply just because of the shape of the pastry. It's got this glacé over top, it's a sugar uh, glaze, a puff pastry, and looks like it's a, just like a vanilla custard inside. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's really good. I haven't even gotten to the custard yet. But you bite in and it's like a puff pastry, but then it kind of turns into like donut consistency. That's really nice. Let me try to get one from the middle here. Mmm. Yes. Look at that custard in there. Mmm. Wow. So sweet and decadent. Alright, the sandwich I got is the piadine. A common sandwich in Bologna. It's a flatbread and then they fill it with cheese ham or salami. I got the prosciutto crudo and then it's got some lettuce as well. Woo. It's got a nice amount of cheese in there too. Mm. Oh yeah. Perfect sandwich snack. Not too heavy. Mm. The salty prosciutto is so good. Which, by the way, in the region of Emilia Romagna, is the town of Parma, where this Parma prosciutto comes from. Got this cheese, some lettuce, nice and crunchy, and the flatbread, which is a perfect amount of bread for this sandwich. It's not too heavy, I love it. All right guys, I don't know if we're gonna make it up to this hill today because so far we've only walked about a block and we've already stopped at a bakery and now we stopped at another place to get some pignoletto wine because we saw the gentleman cutting into a parmigiano reggiano cheese wheel in the window and I'm not gonna not stop for that. So this is La Piccola Baita and we're having some pignoletto wine which is unique to the Bologna region and I have not tried it yet so I'm super stoked for that. I got the frizzanti which is a sparkling. Wow. 
Oh man, that is beautiful. Fruity, aromatic, just as much fizz as you need, nothing crazy, kind of like a chocolina, um, a little bit less than a lambrusco, but it's beautiful, it's just perfect balance, I love it. The portico is meant to represent the snake in the book of Genesis in where you walk through this portico all the way to the top and when you reach the church, it is to signify your salvation. We made it to the top, I'm a little tired, my legs are a little wobbly, but it was well worth it. The view up here is incredible. You see the countryside and you can see the city, the rolling hills and the church. This perimeter out here is just stunning and it definitely works out the hunger for some lasagna. So I feel like we definitely earned it. Let's go. Alright, an eight minute bike ride from the Porto Saragossa is the Pasta Fresca Nardi, which is our lasagna destination today. And we did not expect this place to be as busy as it is. We got here eight minutes before closing time, but the line was out the door and they've been able to take every order. They didn't close the doors on us, thank goodness. The vibe in there is like super energetic and vibrant. The woman, I'm I'm guessing maybe it's Senora Naldi. She is so nice, so friendly. I mean, I'm blown away. And they're making the pasta right there in front of you just before they're gonna drop it in the water or in the sauce, wherever they're gonna make it for you. I'm so stoked right now. The way this place works, it's a to-go shop. So you'll put in your order and they'll give it to you wrapped and hot. Now there are bars right across from the place that you can sit at as long as you buy a drink from them and you can have your food and your lunch there so it's a very nice kind of relationship the bars and the pasta restaurant have together all right so we found a little nook to try this I'm gonna start with the lasagna bolognese peel this plastic off here it's kind of like a like the lid of a, a boba tea shake or something like that look how much bechamel sauce is on here Wow so the lasagna in Bologna is beef, bechamel, and green pasta. It's made with spinach. Look at that. Wow. Oh my goodness. Look at the inside, the layers in there. That fluffy pasta and bechamel. Wow. Let's try this. Mm. Wow. That is way, way creamier than I expected. There's so much bechamel in there and the lasagna noodle is so soft. It all just kind of like blends in, it's like juicy and then you have the beef in every bite. Wow, and it's hot, 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 which is something that you can't always guarantee. Mm. Wow, so creamy. There's like a, a, a cheesiness to the bechamel as well. Whoa. Mm. So good. Look at this creamy, buttery, meaty, pasta-y goodness. And the pasta noodle is green, but it does not taste like spinach at all. It's really just really for coloring and it's the signature look of the bolognese lasagna. Mm. That's lasagna. Mm. It's like a liquid. It's goopy and wet. This some lasagnas I'm more used to more dry lasagnas. This is not that. It's moist. You don't need teeth to eat this. I, I just like put it in my mouth and I go and I squish it down with my tongue like it's done. Like that's it. It just disintegrates. Mm. Wow. Amazing. Amazing this lasagna. It was worth every second we waited in line, which really wasn't that long. It went by fast. Let's try this tortellini pasticcio. All right, here we have the tortellini pasticcio, which uh, looking up online, it's kind of like a tortellini casserole. It's baked tortellini, and it's got this the same ragu around the outside, kind of folded in there. Look at that. Whoa. The 
sausage has that like a uh, 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 little bit of fennel spices like it's like dancing around in flavors mm. and then the tortellini pasta is soft but still held together and the tortellini here in Bologna is actually made with a mixture of ham, prosciutto and mortadella and you can still taste that in here even with the sausage around the outside that ragu sausage it's so good I thought I was maybe not gonna like this as much as the lasagna but I like them both equally look how this pasta comes in this to-go container I've always known pasta to be such a formal thing where you go to a restaurant and you get a huge plate of pasta, but here it's so much more of an informal thing to enjoy where you can even get it in a to-go container and look and they serve it to you hot. You can eat it anywhere along the street. Mm. Dude. Mm. The inside filling of that tortellini. I could see the girl making the tortellini by hand. Mm. Bologna is the home of tortellini and lasagna. And this experience right here at Pasta Fresca Naldi just drives that home. Like they know their tortellini and their lasagna. And you can see that the way you have it here, you're not gonna have it anywhere else in the world. I never enjoy tortellini so much as I do here. And this lasagna is the first time I've had lasagna since we've been here. And I'm so glad we tried it here because that, that right there is something I've never had. It's basically like a mashed potato lasagna. It's amazing. Something I really love about Bologna is how walkable this city is. Whether you're walking on the sidewalk or under the porticos, on the weekends, they actually close off many of the streets that are typically during the week very busy with cars, buses, and motor transportation. But on the weekends, it's for the people. They close off the streets in many of the central areas so you can really spread out and walk far and wide. They have festivals, little markets, uh, they have 5k runs in the mornings. They just have so much going on and it's just so cool. It's a really great thing to see. All the bars and restaurants are open and you can just walk for miles without having to worry about a car. Now, Bologna goes by three nicknames. You have La Dota, La Rosa, and La Grasa. La Dota means the learned one, which refers to the oldest university in the world right here, the University of Bologna, that started in 1088. And then you have La Rosa, which refers to the wonderful red glow of the city from the brick and clay rooftops, as well as the left-leaning politics. And then you have La Grasa, my favorite, which means the fat one, referring to all the rich and decadent food that you find here. There's a place I wanna take you to, and we're gonna dive into that right now. Let's go. We're at La Prosciutteria because we have to try the porchetta. This is a fatty, boneless roast pork known as a staple of central and northern Italy. And I could not leave here without trying this. La Prosciutteria is a place that is constantly packed. So we got here just as they open so that we can get a good seat and we don't have to wait in a long line. But trust me, if you're waiting in line, it'll be worth it. The porchetta sandwich is here. Look at this beautiful schiacciata bread. This is similar to a focaccia, uh, just flatter. And then you have the porchetta sliced in here. Porchetta is a pork roast. It's savory, it's got the fatty and still baked with the skin on and it's seasoned with different Italian herbs like rosemary and oregano. Check that out. This sandwich in particular has sun-dried tomato. Oh wow, look at that, how juicy. And uh, gorgonzola dolce, which is the soft, spreadable gorgonzola. Look at that. Oh. One second, it's got like a truffled gorgonzola. Now I remember seeing it on the menu description and I forgot, but as soon as I brought it to my nose, I could smell the truffle which brought it right to mind. Mmm. Mmm, wow. 
that's fantastic. Mmm. That porqueta is so thinly sliced and it has this wonderful savoriness to it. The gorgonzola cheese, the truffle, the sun-dried tomato all adds to making this a nice moist sandwich. Porqueta could be kind of dry sometimes just because it is a roast and it's boneless. But this is delicious. That savory herbaceousness, you're getting like the rosemary and that like roast pork flavor. Oh man, and a little bit of the sweetness from the sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, that's a good bite. Mm. Think of a pulled pork sandwich because they slice it so thin, the, the pork really just breaks apart. We're entering the Cuadrilatero. This is in the center center of the historic area of Bologna and it's where you'll find all the deli shops, pasta shops, people having lunch in trattorias and so many Italian provisions not just from Bologna but from all over the country. So we're not gonna eat here but I wanted to show you guys the uh, Mercato di Mezzo, the interior portion of it. They have uh, bars with wine and beer uh, as well as even like the pasta shops they have a pizza place upstairs um, we had pasta here the other day it was excellent wow so you have like pizza arancini it's really cozy in here they even have like small little kind of stall restaurants tons tons of Italian delicacies <laughs> they even have uh, a poke place if you want something a little lighter all right so we have just walked directly through and we're on the other side right now so it's one long haul I think we should go that way. This is the outdoor portion now, and you have like a lot of the produce and vegetables. Every single day, the produce gets put out here. There's fish markets, and you just get to see like the best of what's in season uh, in the Emilia Romagna region. The artichokes, the artichokes look so good all the time. Look at that. Wow. And as you're walking through, you're seeing the butcher shops, the delis. I mean, this has been a trading post outlet in this exact area since the Middle Ages. Whoa, look at the pasta. You have all the pasta. This is the famous tortellini that you'll find in Bologna. I cannot wait to have this in Brodo. So, this is mortadella, Simone. Then we have Parma jam, 24 months. Then this is a pink salami, it's all the way to the mortadella. It comes always from the shoulder of the pig, so the taste is more sweet, we can say. Ah, okay. Then we have, this is um, salami zia ferrarese, and this is pancetta arrotolata. Then we have all cheeses, our scoperone, it's a cream cheese, uh, it's a cow milk. Okay. So cream of parmigiano reggiano, oh. this is parmigiano reggiano, that is um, uh, 18 months. Then we have uh, talamello, a local uh, uh, cheese, and pecorino that comes from Sardinia. In the heart of the quadrilatero is Simoni, a salumeria serving the most wonderful delicacies of this region. I'm starting with a tasting uh, tray of different aged Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm gonna start with the 18 month and it's got a 10 month aged balsamic on here. Look at that. Mm. Wow, that has a milky creaminess to it. Mm not too salty a little softer on the on the palate and then the balsamic is a, a thick balsamic glaze it's sweet and it's got nice depth of flavor a little bit of acidity on there this is the 24 month aged parmigiano look at the the difference in color already you have this it's more yellow than the other ones What a difference, less milky. It's got more of this kind of cheddar-y flavor. Like if you were having like an aged, like a Dutch Gouda or something like that, it's got a little bit more crystallization. It's a little bit saltier, a little bit um, more confident in the flavor, if, if that makes sense. This one here is the 36 month Parmesan with a 10 year aged balsamic vinegar on top. Wow. 
I've never had the opportunity to try a Parmesan cheese this old, so I'm very excited for this privilege right now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> How it went just a little bit sweeter. It's incredible. You're getting less milkiness. Now it's more salty, a little bit more sharp, but there's a certain sweetness that has come into play here. This one is definitely on the saltier end and has that little bit of um, sweetness that's coming into play. And the balsamic that's now 10 year old is much thinner, not sweeter. You almost don't taste any acidity from the vinegar in there. The mother of meats here, this is the mortadella. When you come here, this is exactly what you're gonna try. You gotta try. Look at the size of this. Wow. <laughs> this is incredible. This is made from pork shoulder and lard, which is put in there in globs and then it's sliced. That's why you see the white fatty portions. Wow. So delicate. Not very fatty. You do have the fatty in there, but it's not like a melty fattiness to it. You have that cooked meat flavor. This is an oven-baked cured meat. It's not like one that you hang or let it dry out. It's actually cooked. So it's got uh, that kind of cooked flavor to it, which is really nice. It's very different from your usual cold cuts. This I've been especially waiting to try. This is salami rosa. It uh, translates to red salami, and it's like the little brother of mortadella. Look how thinly sliced this is wow it just breaks apart <laughs> but I already feel it. it's um, got a, um, a more roast pork kind of feeling to it mm. Wow. this might be my favorite of the two holy cow that is wonderful mm. But it has more like a mouth texture, like a thin slice, like roast turkey or uh, roast chicken. It's not like the salami that we know. Mm. Wow, that's phenomenal. <laughs> okay, I'm so excited. Let's try the, the Parma crudo, right here. This is coming from Parma, also in the region of Emiliana Romagna, a neighbor of Bologna. Look at this wonderful raw prosciutto. This is straight cured, not cooked, aged to perfection. Look at these thin layers of marbling fat throughout here. Isn't that just glorious? It has a flavor like nothing else. Mm. That is from the leg of the pig. Mm. So creamy. Creamier than a block of Parmesan cheese, if you could believe that, right? Mm. The fattiness dissolves and it just makes a rounded palate flavor. Salty. A little bit sweet, that pork flavor and the fat from there is just wonderful. This is the salami. This is more like the salami that we know in America. But look at the kind of the, the lines of, of fat that are marbled through there. Mm. Whoa! I'm telling you, salami tastes totally different here. A little bit fattier than the mortadella, I feel like the the grease in my mouth is really good. This last one here is, um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't remember the name, but look at how beautiful, it looks like bacon. Look at that. It's so thin, I can't get over it. Mm. Wow, it's almost like just pure lard in the best way possible. Salty dissolves immediately because the fat is so tender that the warmth of your mouth immediately melts away all that fat. I want to try this spreadable Parmesan cheese, Parmigiano. I'm gonna get a little bit of this uh, Crescentina. 
It's actually a bread with pancetta baked into it. Wow. Mm. Mm. I'm chewing cubes of pancetta. Mm, they get some of that saltiness from the bacheta. Bacheta's kind of like bacon. It has that saltiness. So imagine it baked into a bread. The bread is a little bit on the drier side, but it complements it. It's uh, not supposed to be like a soft, tender bread. It's a firmer, a little bit more crunchy bread. And the Parmesan cream is very delicate. Gentle in flavor. It's nothing that really stands out. A nice little compliment to the Crescentino. This one right here is a sheep's cheese called Talamelo. Mm. Instantly you know it's different. It's milkier. Mm. Yeah. Just like press it against like the roof of your mouth like just to get all that flavor as it's dissolving. Oh, oh wow. Wow. It's you can totally tell not a cow's cheese. It's a sheep's cheese. It's got this uh, riny um, brine flavor to it. Oh, a little sharp. Mm, wonderful. Mm, and the aftertaste like this like straw, hay, very natural, almost funky, but not quite. It tastes like the mountains. Before we get into the rest of our eating, today we're stopping at Mercato Albani, our neighborhood market in the Bolognina neighborhood where we're staying. We're grabbing some lovely bananas and fresh clementines from our buddy Nomi, who has just got such a wonderful array of fruits and vegetables on his stand. Look at these clementines, how fresh they are. You can see just how juicy the skins are. I mean, these are as fresh as you can get and they sell them al folio. That means that they still have this beautiful green leaf to them. And I want to say that probably helps keep the freshness of the fruit intact. You're gonna take this one. Grazie. And then we have wonderful bananas. He's just got such fresh produce. Look at this. Perfect, ready to eat. I've got to dig into this orange right now. Look at look how the spritz just comes off of the skins. It's so fresh. Wow. You've literally got to hold it away from your face or you will get orange spritz in your eyes. <laughs> and this market is not just fruits and vegetables. They do cheeses, provisions, wines, um, meats, everything here poultry as well and I think on the other side they also do clothing kind of like a flea market style as well can we just appreciate this for a second beautiful incredible fruit and produce that you're gonna find here in Bolognina mm. oh amazing it's about 50 degrees right now outside and you can taste that cool freshness in this orange as well it's so sweet and tangy it's like candy this is one of the best oranges you'll ever get to try. Check this out. This is chipola tropea. This is an onion specifically grown for salads. It's meant to be eaten raw. And Nomi and his folks here clean it, get it ready for you to go. Look at the color on this. You have this beautiful, vibrant purple and white. Imagine what that looks like on your plate with a salad. Wow. It's not quite lunchtime yet, but it's never too early to start with an aperitivo. Basically like a pre-meal drink that you would have, a pre-lunch, pre-dinner, and it's also just kind of a way to sit down, relax before you go into whatever meal you're gonna have. All right, so one of the drinks we got is a dry vermouth. This is like classic. One cube of ice, a lemon peel, and that's all you need. Mm. Oh, wow. It's sweet, but then the bitter comes in, that herbaceous bitterness, and it's so splendid. It's like your mouth begins to water. You can immediately sense how this is gonna open up your appetite. So good. I got the gin tonic luxardo, and look how crisp and just like fresh this cocktail looks. Now this is still in the realm of aperitivo, but it's more cocktail uh, because it's a larger drink, um, it's got tonic in it, but that gin and that bitterness definitely also opens up your appetite. This looks scrumptious. It smells amazing. I can even see the light 
oil of the lemon from when it was expressed into the cocktail just floating over the top of the drink. Mm. Oh, wow. Lemoniness in here. It is as if there was like essential oil of lemon in here, but it's not overpowering. But that lemon oil essence is so present in here. And then that tonic is a zesty and frizzanti like they say here and it's just fantastic ice cold my fingers are freezing I don't even care though this is so good two of the most famous foods from Bologna are tagliatelle al ragu and tortelloni so I came to ragu this is a pasta joint in the central historic district that usually has a line out the door full of locals waiting to get their pasta dishes. I came right around the corner to try the pasta. This is, it looks small, but it's quite a heavy box. Wow, let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah. Wow, look at that flat noodle pasta and all that meat sauce, wow. So this pasta is called uh, tagliatelle and it's a flat egg noodle pasta and look how it just picks up the meat. You'll find that here every pasta has a specific purpose and this one here, its purpose is to pick up as much meat sauce as possible. Here we go. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so tender. That al dente pasta and the meat sauce is so good. It's actually cooked with milk to tenderize it in the cooking process. And you can really taste it in the meat, just how tender it is. Mmm. Oh, there's like chunks of the meat. Look how juicy that looks. So much juiciness in that meat. Oh, this is a good bite. Mmm. Mmm. They gave us some Parmigiano to go with it. I don't even want to put it on here. It's so good the way it is. Oh wow, look, I'm digging in from the side. You can see how juicy and just the perfect amount of like liquid in that meat sauce is in there. Look at this scoop that I just got out of there. It almost looks like a lasagna of all the layering of the pasta and the meat. Mm. Amazing. This is surreal. I'm having tagliatelle al ragu and I'm standing under this beautiful icon of Ave Maria that I really just walked down the street, looked and saw it and said, hey, we can post up here and have our lunch. This is so amazing right now. This is the tortelloni, traditionally cooked in a butter and sage sauce. That's what we got right here. It's stuffed with ricotta cheese and parsley and then sauteed in a butter and sage sauce. Look at that. Mm. Oh, the sweetness of that ricotta cheese and the herbaceousness of the sage. Mm. All it needs is that butter to make it creamy and fatty. Oh, wow, this is so good. Those tortellonis, which are not tortellini, tortelloni are the bigger pasta version of a tortellini and it's cooked al dente and they're stuffed so well with the ricotta and the parsley let me open one up so you can see what i'm talking about look at that creamy delicate ricotta cheese in there wow i'm gonna put some of this fresh parmesan on there oh i'm just gonna dump the whole thing in there wow look at that bite now <laughs> it's gonna add like a nice saltiness to it mm. One thing I've learned here is really how Parmigiano complements certain pasta dishes more than others and I feel like it really fits the tortelloni here. And with the ragu, I felt like it didn't need it. The, the focus of the ragu is the meat sauce. Here, the focus of the tortelloni is the cheese and the ricotta. So I feel like it just perfectly complements it with that butter and sage. guys we've reached Plaza Maggiore the heartbeat of center Bologna it's a tradition for the locals to come here and hang out on the steps have a cocktail maybe a little bit of aperitif and people watch obviously in Emilia Romagna we're in northern Italy wine is king but beer is having its own come up 
and they are brewing some really excellent stuff. We're here at Birreria Popolare. We came here for the first time a couple weeks ago and tried some of their beers and they are excellent. And they also even have some international varieties too. All right, being a red-blooded American, I also had to get their double IPA. Look at the color of this beer. That is some of the most beautiful rosy amber color you're gonna see in a double IPA. One, head goes back because it's delicious. Two, head goes back because it's so strong I might actually fall on my butt right now because wow, that is an excellent beer with a high alcohol volume. It's nutty, it's got that bitterness of that grapefruit rind, it's juicy, um, it's definitely, it seems like it might be hazy but it's not giving me hazy vibes, it's very clean, crisp IPA and double at that so you're getting double the punch in there. This is the nona of pastas, the tortellini in brodo. It's the small tortellini filled with mortadella, prosciutto, and parmesan cheese cooked in this wonderful chicken broth. This has been my favorite dish that we've had being in Bologna. And it looks so simple, but when I tell you the flavor is outstanding and something you really never get anywhere else, I really mean that. It's really hot. <laughs> wow. Mm. Oh, that prosciutto and mortadella and the Parmesan cheese is so flavorful. It's salty and meaty. It's, it's really like a tiny sandwich inside of the tortellini. <laughs> this broth is really, really good. It's super flavorful. That chicken and parsley herbs flavors is coming through. Mm. So good. I really feel like I couldn't have been here at a better time to try this dish because the weather's really started to cool. It's like in the 50s right now and this hot chicken broth with the tortellini is just the perfect dish to have any time of the day. I can really see how this is a staple of northern Italy. Mm. Oh, It's one of those soups that feels like you can take away a cold. Let's put some parmesan on it. Un parmigiano. <laughs> oh wow. Look how it starts to melt in there immediately. Oh man. One more. Okay. Mm. That tortellini in Brodo was delicious and just what I was hoping for. I'm gonna tell you guys, I have had the tortellini in Brodo in several places throughout Bologna, some more high-end restaurants as well, and this by far has been my favorite. It's called, the restaurant is called Italian Breakfast, literally breakfast, and it's just somewhere we pass by and I saw on the menu they have tortellini in Brodo and I said I need to have this one more time before we leave Bologna, and so we went inside and I'm so happy we did because it was delicious. Another thing, right outside this restaurant, there's a historical landmark that you'll probably come across when you visit Bologna. It's called the Three Arrows, um, and it's this folklore story that under this wooden portico, there is actually three arrows. You walk by and you see people aimlessly looking up at the porticos and you're like, what are they looking for? What are they looking at? They're looking for the three arrows. And the folklore is that there was, back in the medieval ages, there was three men who came here and they were gonna murder someone, but they were distracted by the sight of a naked woman on the other side of the street. And they gazed at her through the window and misshot their arrows. But after a little bit more research, I learned that this is all folklore and the arrows were actually planted there uh, kind of as like a little joke as a little building of folklore by some construction workers um, when they were rehabilitating this building guys so. I have been in Italy for almost a month and it never ceases to amaze me how many things are going on and we happen to stumble upon this kind of like a uh, holiday pop-up. There's something I definitely wanted to try and that is Torrone. Cherry, nudes, almonds, wow, pistachio. Ooh. Wow, this is a, a soft Torrone. It's a, almost feels like a hard marshmallow but still soft. This is the chocolate. 
Wow. <laughs> Delicioso. Look at this beautiful marzipan fruit. This is an almond paste shaped and then painted to resemble fruit. And these clementine ones look just like the ones we had this morning at the market. Grazie. Grazie. I ended up getting the uh, cherry with almonds. The whole brick of Torone. <laughs> oh. And it's like so sticky, you can't break a piece off of it. I'm just gonna take a bite out of it. Um, let's see, right here, with a little bit of cherry. Mm. Oh man, that is so good. It's so soft. Wow, it's as if ice cream was not icy and cold and you could just pick it up and take a bite out of it. That's the softness of that. It's like room temperature gelato. If gelato was temperature stable. <laughs> you guys, wow. Those cherries. Mm. I want to say those are probably amarena cherries. Amarena cherries, which is an Italian preserved cherry. And the almonds, oh boy. And that marshmallowy torrone. It's so sweet. I wanna get a bite of that. It almost feels like it's a little bit more like a white chocolate, a little firmer. Whoa, oh. That's white chocolate. Like a white chocolate mixed in there with dried cherry, dehydrated cherry. It's a little bit more tart in that spot right there. It's amazing the layering of flavors that they do. It's never just one thing that you expect. It's always multiple layers of the same ingredients, but just in different ways to create texture and dimension in, in a food. Oh. This here, that's not plastic, it's rice paper. So you can actually eat that too. It's, it totally dissolves in your mouth, watch. Look. It dissolves in your mouth. So if you get torrone, don't peel that off. That's meant to be eaten as well, it's rice paper. I'm in the historic center at La Antica Pizzeria da Michele, a quintessential pizza shop, Napolitan style, and it's been open since the 1800s. I've got myself a Napolitan pizza. They've only got maybe about six or seven pizzas to choose from on the menu, which actually is kind of great. And this one has the tomatoes, mozzarella, capers, anchovies, and basil. Also a nice sprinkling of oregano on there. Look at how beautiful this pizza is. Now pizza is life for everyone in Italy. So although we're not in Naples, you will find a lot of Napolitan style pizza places here in Bologna. Da Michele here has been making pizza since 1870 and they source all their ingredients directly from Naples. The hardest part about a pizza is figuring out where to dig in from because they don't slice it for you and that's natural here but it's also kind of cool you can just cut in from the middle so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm definitely getting some of everything in here. I've got anchovy, basil, tomato, oregano in there, and a caper. There we go, hold on, let me get that. Mm. Oh. Mm. Mm. Those anchovies are crispy and salty, and these giant capers, these big, almost like globe capers are salty and the basil just refines everything with this beautiful flowery essence in the pizza bite and that crust is soft but a little bit charcoaly as well and then the mozzarella is cheesy and chewy oh, look at this crust how flat it is but still soft and malleable it breaks very easily and you have that wonderful kind of char on there. I love that in a pizza. And look how thin this is. It's so thin. It's like, wow. And I know I'm taking this pizza apart, but really it's meant to be eaten with a fork and a knife because there's no way you can pick that up with the toppings on it. I love how much basil is on this pizza. I can get it in almost every bite. Wow. They break apart so easy. The anchovy, you can almost break it and then kind of spread it to your liking over the pizza. Guys, I have to show you this. Look at the bottom of this crust. 
Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Look at all those little bubbles. That's all from the fermentation process. A lot of the pizza shops here really pride themselves on how long they're fermenting their dough. And you'll see it say on the store front says 36 hours, 48 hour fermentation. That all really goes into the quality of the pizza here. Yes, the flour, the tomatoes, the cheese, but the fermentation process is essential. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> you guys, this is fried pizza. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wow. That is huge. Oh, it looks so good. Look at this golden brown crust. Some salt on there. It's piping hot. I'm so excited to cut into this. Look at this. It's got mozzarella, uh, ricotta cheese, ham, I think um, also Napolitan salami. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Oh man, that's so juicy. Gooey mozzarella, ricotta, the uh, almost like a pancetta and then this uh, Italian salami, which is more like a ham. And look at this thin crust, but look at that, wow. <laughs> look at this. It's a pouch of cheese and meats. All right, I gotta be super careful. This just came out of these giant copper fryer that they have in there. Mm. Wow. It's almost like a grilled ham and cheese. The ham is really smoky and the cheese is like a very uh, salty mozzarella. Uh, ricotta is pretty plain in flavor, but this actually has a lot of flavor to it. Mm. And the chewy mozzarella, it's in there for added like texture and bite to it. And like that ham is super smoky. It's like a smoked fried pizza and the dough just like the other pizza we had is so soft and doughy and just lightly crisp on the outside that is delicious look at the elasticity of this dough wow <laughs> look at this cheese string from all the way up here look <laughs> It's almost like a donut, but more elastic and stretchy, but the outside is like beignet, donut, oh man. And not greasy at all. It's all just the juiciness from the cheese, milky, and that smokiness from that, it's, the ham is almost like nearing a bacon, almost. That's so good. Time for dessert and of course I'm gonna get gelato but not only is this gelato this is in a focaccia roll it's a bun it feels like a, almost like a brioche bun and then it's stuffed with gelato this is so Italian I've only ever heard about this and I'm so excited to try it it's from Cremeria Cavour and we've been here one time and the gelato was amazing but now I get to try it in this basically a burger bun for ice cream or for gelato the three flavors I got are castagna, which is chestnut, lemon, limone, and fragola, strawberry. I want to try this chestnut first. Look how beautiful and creamy that looks. Just the way it pulls away. Oh, oh. wow. Oh, wow. This like combination of chocolatey and creamy, but also a fruity, like a, a nutty flavor to it coming from a chestnut tree I mean a uh, chestnut fruit that's wonderful this is the lemon oh wow it's like an icy a firm dense icy mm. wow wow so much lemon flavor it's like eating lemonade that's incredible can you believe there's no milk in here this is just the flavors and the churning process that make it so dense and creamy. But it's 
it's bursting with lemon flavor. This is the strawberry. Look at that. The beautiful color hue of strawberry on that. That's such a natural tint of, of the strawberry red. Mm, that's like biting right into a strawberry. Into a ripe summer strawberry. Mm, wow. Amazing, and the little seeds crunch it in there. Let me try this bread. Whoa. It's cold. <laughs> That's really like a burger bun. A sweet bread burger bun. Look how well it holds the gelato in here. And the gelato is so... Uh, it's cold today, so it's so sh stable right now. It's not melting everywhere. It's just nestled inside of this bread with the uh, sugar on top. This is so cool. If you guys have made it this far, thank you so much. Polonia has been my home for the last month and it's always gonna hold a special place in my heart. Yes, it's world renowned as a food city, but the beauty of this place on its own is worth a trip and the people are so friendly. Put it on your next itinerary, you will not be sorry. I'm so excited though because tomorrow I'm jumping on a train to Rome. I will see you guys very soon. Bye.